Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we go about finding the angle between two planes. And to do this we look at the vectors which are perpendicular to each of the two planes. And it's the angle between these two normal vectors which is exactly the same as the angle between the two planes. Now the two planes that I've drawn here are the ones in the question. So we'll be looking then at finding that angle between these two planes. Now let's suppose that our two planes are P1 and P2 and the normals to those two planes are N1 and N2 respectively. So if you're trying to find out the angle between the two planes, let's say it's this angle in here, angle theta, then this angle theta shows up as the angle between the two normals. And that's because since N1 is perpendicular to P1, this angle in here would be 90 degrees minus theta degrees. That's if we're working in degrees. And because N2 is perpendicular P2, then this angle would be 90 degrees. So because this is 90 minus theta, this must be theta. So that these two angles add up to 90 degrees. OK, well I'll remove this angle here. And so how do we get angle theta? Well, because it's the angle between two vectors, I could use the scalar product or dot product. That is that the cosine of angle theta is equal to the two normals, let's say n1, dotted with n2. And we divide this by the magnitude of each of these vectors, n1 and n2. Now do remember that theta could be an acute angle or it could be the obtuse angle here. It will always be an obtuse angle if this quantity comes out as a negative value. And if positive, it will give us the acute angle. But either way, depending on the question that's asked, if we come out with the obtuse angle and we want the acute angle, all we've got to do is subtract it from 180. Now in this example then, we've got to find the acute angle between the planes R dotted with i plus j minus 3k equaling 4 and R dotted with 2i minus j plus k equaling 8. Now these planes might also appear in Cartesian form and if they did, this plane would be 1x or just x plus 1y or just y minus 3z equals 4. And for this plane it would be 2x minus y plus 1z or just z equals 8. So either way to do questions like this what I would do is say let my normal vectors let's say n1 be i plus j minus 3k okay or we could just read the coefficients off of x y and z and the second vector second normal vector let's say we call it n2 then that's going to be equal to 2i minus j plus k and so if we were trying to work out the angle then say theta between the two planes then using the scalar product here we can see that then cos theta would be equal to and I'll just put it down in stages here. If we do the dot product between our two normals, we're going to have 1 times 2, okay, plus, and then we've got 1 times minus 1. And then to this we add again minus 3 times 1, minus 3 times 1. And this is all divided by the magnitude then of each vector multiplied together. 
So if we take the magnitude of m1, that's going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 3 squared. I'll put that in brackets. Now I could say multiply by another square root, but I'm going to just use the multiplication rule for thirds and just put this as another bracket here without the root. And that will be the magnitude of n2, which will be 2 squared plus 1 squared plus another 1 squared. Okay, so if you work this out, the top comes to minus 2. So it's going to be negative overall. And the bottom, this comes to 11. And this comes to 6. 11 6 is 66. So we've got the root of 66. And if you work this out as a decimal, you get minus 0 0.2461 and so on. So to get theta, we have to inverse cos both sides. So therefore, theta will equal the inverse cos of negative 0 0.2461 and so on. And if you do this, say giving your answer in degrees, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, or if you're going to give it in radians, make sure it's in radians mode. Well, doing it in degrees, it turns out to be 104.25 and so on degrees. So we're after the acute angle. So if we've got the obtuse angle, we can easily get the acute angle, therefore the acute angle. What's it going to be? Well, all we've got to do is just take it away from 180 degrees. So 180 minus 104.25 and so on gives us 75.74 and so on. And if we round this, say, to one decimal place, it's going to equal 75 0.7 degrees to one decimal place, 1 dp for short. Okay, so I hope it's giving you an idea then how you can go about finding the angle between two planes. Just find the angle between the two normals and then depending on what the question is, whether they want the acute angle or the obtuse angle, you can work it out.